more talk now about whether or not we are actually in an internet bubble. Let's ask uh, Jeff Clavier, he's founder and managing partner at SoftTech VC. He's also a Groupon shareholder, uh, also owns shares in Twitter. And in Groupon, you have uh, a few million dollars worth of shares because of a company you sold, Groupon. So we should say that up front here, Jeff. Um, are you happy this morning? Is, uh, news of this uh, IPO filing about to occur? So I think I'm, I'm happy with the IPO filing. I think it's good news for the industry. I'm also, to, um, to be honest, I'm a bit pissed because I think there's been a lot of um, really stupid things said over the past 24 hours around uh, Groupon, its IPO, its, uh, its CEO, Andrew Mason. I think that they've created a, um, a brand new company that has gone from zero to um, uh, $650 million in revenue or, um, in the last quarter, uh, which is a crazy growth. They've created 7,000 jobs, and I've heard people sort of compare Andrew to Bernie Madoff. And so I think that people should step back and try and understand what makes Groupon quite unique. It's right. a company which is building a local you know, workforce that gets in touch with all those um, merchants to create um, opportunities for people to buy uh, services at a discount and that requires a large footprint and because there is a lack of differentiation on the technology side you just need to run faster and that's why those guys have been spending a lot of money in marketing if you understand those principles then you'll see that Groupon is actually not as as bad or evil as people have been have been talking about it. Well, one of the problems may be that we're lumping all these different types of social media related ventures into the same category. You're explaining that yeah. why they're more capital intensive than others. But uh, as you say, one of the things that people are questioning is why they're spending so much. The marketing's their biggest expense. They lost $456 million last year. Uh, you know, the, the float of the shares that's going to be coming out when they do become public is relatively small. People say that's because they they don't want short sellers skewing it uh, in the beginning of trading. What's your response to that? So I can't really comment on the, uh, the float they're going to create for the stock, but certainly if you look at how um, sort of the mechanics work for these kinds of businesses, you're going to spend money to acquire customers and then you're going to look at how much revenue you generate per customer and typically you do that in cohorts. So uh, in the S1, they mentioned the Q2 2010 cohort that they spent 18 million dollars, one eight to acquire. And then over 12 months, that cohort generated 64 million dollars in gross revenue, which is basically the revenue that Groupon gets after paying out their share to their, um, um, to their business partners which means that the payback of that cohort was basically a few months. So they can actually spend a lot of money to acquire those customers because they get that money back very, very quickly. The big question that we don't uh, have an answer about is what sort of churn do they have on that cohort? What sort mm -hmm. of open rate do they have on the emails? So there's a lot of technical data that we they didn't share with us. And to be honest, they might not want to share it because leaving social and their competitors are sort of watching. And so uh, what I wish is that someone who understands actually how to build a local business did a real sort of analysis of the Groupon profile and understand why they're actually spending so much money because essentially sure. all the marketing dollars they're spending today is revenue which is going to come through the door, you know, six months, 12 months from now. Mr. Coffey, this is Tobias Lush from Citigroup. I, I'm just wondering, I, I, there's elements that we heard back in 98, 99, the big spends, the growth, the first mover advantages, all these, these factors that were very instrumental to the valuations the companies achieved with that kind of present value of some wonderful outcome down the road in terms of earnings. And, you know, are you worried when you see this kind of fervor generated in the marketplace for some of the deals that are coming, and there are some names that are coming probably after your, yours, um, that people are probably losing sight? Now, that's not Bernie Madoff, that's just saying people are kind of not thinking it through. So, th there's two things here. One is, is Groupon building a long-term sustainable business? And I believe that the answer is yes. We're just in the first inning of the, that business because uh, there's been a, lo a lot of attempts over the past 10 years to create this sort of local um, phenomena on the internet. And Groupon is sort of the first to have really nailed the model that seems to uh, scale really, really fast. And then there is the, um, the, the demand from the market for a very high growth stock where the flow in the case of LinkedIn was very small, and it sounds like Groupon's gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. And so people have to understand 
that in the uh, initial six months before the lockup expires, there won't be that many shares to trade, and therefore that create a that creates an inflation, um, uh, almost technical inflation, I would say, on those stocks. Uh, Jeff, real quick, are you going to hold on to your shares once they go public? Do you know yet? Um, this is something we will discuss with our own sort of limited partners, but I do think that Groupon is a long-term business, so we'll definitely won't sell you know everything we have. We might sell a we might sell a few. We don't know yet. All right, Jeff, thanks for coming on.